Well, I love building worlds. Uh, I think it's one of my favorite parts of writing. And I think anytime you're looking into the future and imagining a world, you're in, you're stepping into like a science fiction-y kind of realm. And I think sadly, anytime you think about the future right now, you enter into a horror realm. You know, I start the book well after all the calamities have taken place. And I even start the book after this group of 20 people has gone through their roughest patch. And I, there's a reason for that, and the reason is that I, I'm not interested in the drama of all of the collapse. I'm interested in what happens after and how people cope and how people think about that and how they're changed by that um, in really small and um, huge ways. It's one of the things I'm most interested in exploring has been trying to like close the gap between people and animals and take away this sense of civilization that keeps us separate from this thing that we actually share with all creatures, with just a sense of being and a, and a will to survive. We judges loved The New Wilderness. It is a many-layered dystopian fiction set in the not-too-distant future. It's the environmental novel of our times. We were impressed with a novel taking on the greatest story of our times, that is, climate change. And yet it's a novel which focuses through relationships. The cause of the novel is not lost because the novel is not lost in its cause. The characters are driven by each other, held back by each other. At its centre is the intense and punishing relationship between the generations of one mother and her daughter. As readers, we sensed ourselves in the wilderness of the new wilderness, only to realise that was the writer's aim. An urgent novel reflective of what is happening in society right now. It's a novel that the older Greta Thunberg would take great pleasure in reading. I love a read that is entirely absorbing, that makes me forget everything and allows the world to fall away. And I was entirely engrossed in this novel. I didn't want to leave it. I loved the characters and how interesting they were. This is a book where women really get to be uh, fully rendered, which is so rare in fiction. And it's also something of an adventure novel. And there's uh, sex and intrigue and uh, post-apocalypse. And so uh, it has a little bit of everything. I think that we have very specific ideas about what a mother-daughter relationship will look like and what a novel about a mother-daughter relationship will look like. And what's great about The New Wilderness is that Diane Cook really challenges that common narrative. And we see a mother who makes choices that are unexpected and sometimes uncomfortable. And still, we never question her love for her daughter. And when we think about climate change, we tend to care more when we personalize it, when we talk about the world that we're leaving for our children. And in this novel, we see a woman who very deliberately made the choice to save her child from a world where climate change is making it unlivable. Uh, and I think that's an interesting frame for this novel. One of the things that The New Wilderness shows us is that we are all animals. Uh, this band of survivors, uh, they make some really brutal choices and they live a life that uh, implies that really it is indeed survival of the fittest. The baby emerged from B the color of a bruise. B burned the cord somewhere between them and uncoiled it from the girl's slight neck. And though she knew it was useless, swept her daughter up into her hands, tapped on her soft chest, and blew a few shallow breaths into her slimy mouth. Around her, the singular song of crickets expanded. Bee's skin prickled from heat. Sweat dried on her back and face. The sun had crested and would, more quickly than seemed right, fall again. From where Bee knelt, she saw their valley, its secret grasses and sage. In the distance were lonely buttes and closer 
mud mounds that looked like cairns marking the way somewhere. The caldera stood sharp and white on the horizon. B dug into the hard earth with a stick, then a stone, then hollowed and smoothed it with her hands. She scooped the placenta into it, then the girl. The hole was shallow and her baby's belly jutted from it. Wet from birth, the little body held on to coarse sand and tiny golden buds riddled from their stems by the heat of the sun. She sprinkled more dust onto the baby's forehead, pulled from her deer hide bag several wilted green leaves and laid them over the girl. She broke off craggy branches from the surrounding sage, laid them over the distended belly, the absurdly small shoulders. The baby was a misshapen mound of plant green, red rust blood, a dull violet map of veins under wet tissue skin. And now the animals who had sensed it were converging. In the sky, a cyclone of buzzards lowered as if to check on the progress, then uplifted on a thermal. She heard the soft tread of coyotes. They wove through the bloomy sage. A mother and three skinny kits appeared under jaggedly thrown shade. B heard whines ease from their impassive yawns. They would wait. A wind stirred and she breathed in the dusty heat. She missed the stagnant scent of the hospital room where she'd given birth to Agnes, what must have been eight years ago now. The way the scratchy gown had stretched across her chest and gotten tangled up when she tried to roll to either side. How the cool air blew through her hips between her legs, where the doctors and nurses stared, prodded, and pulled Agnes from her. She'd hated the feeling, so exposed, used, animal-like. But here it was all dust and hot air. Here she'd needed to guide the small body. Had she been five months pregnant, six, seven? Out with one hand, while with the other she'd had to block a diving magpie. She'd wanted to be alone for this, but what she wouldn't have given for a probing gloved hand, stale recirculated air, humming machines, fresh sheets under her rather than this desert dust, some sterile comfort, what she wouldn't have given for her mother.